What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Sakina, and I'm back for another review. This is my review for The Real Housewives of Potomac. This is season seven, episode one. The girls of the DMV are back on our TV screens. And yes, I said DMV because we know the only person that lives in Potomac is Karen. So yes, they're back. I'm excited. And I'm even more excited to be a part of the Whether You Like It or Not panel tonight at 9.15 Standard Time. Y'all, why did I say in my Bell Collective video that it was on Tuesday. I had been taking a social media break as far as Instagram because I'm still on uh, Twitter, but I took an Instagram break and I got on today and I shared, you know, the fact that we'll be going live. Me thinking on Tuesday until I go on YouTube and I see that Yacrities posted that we were going live tonight. So I'm like, wait, we're going live tonight? I thought we was doing Tuesday. Like, when did this change? So obviously, some things have changed and my fellow panelists did not inform me. So yes, I do apologize for um, the misleading information that I gave in my Bell Collective review is definitely tonight at 9.15 Eastern Standard Time. So uh, yeah, y'all just check the community tab. Y'all know what I say in all these videos, okay? So anyway, let's go ahead and get into this review. So we see the blondes and the blondes is Karen and Giselle. They're together. They're... Um, I don't know if y'all heard that, but my mom just made a loud outburst. Okay. But yes, they're, I guess, downtown D.C. It's funny because I was just there a few weeks ago um, looking at all the monuments and things like that. But, you know, it's not um, spring, so the flowers weren't. I, I didn't see a lot of those cherry blossom trees. I don't know if it was because I went in the summertime or what. But, yeah, I didn't get to, and I was, like, in that area. So, I don't know. I didn't see none of that. I would have loved to, though. Anyway, they're doing a picnic and they've invited Ashley and Robin. But before the two, the other two ladies get there, they start talking about Ashley and how she's getting a divorce and they trying to figure out if she was okay or at least the grand dame was. And Giselle was like, I mean, she don't seem like she's slowing down to me. Have you seen her on TikTok doing her little cheerleading dance moves, child? So yeah, Giselle seems to think that there isn't any issues. But uh, the other two ladies get there and Ashley, she seemed like she's doing just fine. So then they start asking about Ray and Karen was like, I mean, you know, with it being the 17 year age difference, she's basically keeping him young. And Giselle was like, I mean, last year it was 14, then another minute it was 21. But Karen was like, no, this is not me, okay? I clearly know the age difference between me and my husband. And when she said that, that was the first, when Giselle said that, that was the first person I thought of. Like, we know that Mia clearly did not know the age difference between her and her husband. So, you know, they got right into Mia and her mess. Now, we remember back when Mia was posting on social media, trying to say that she you know got basically like a cancer scare i guess but it was very confusing reading it and you know us as the viewers we weren't the only ones that were confused her castmates were confused as well because it's like okay one minute you feel like you had you're saying that you had cancer then the next minute you're saying that that wasn't the case so they're trying to figure out okay girl is you sick or is you not because like what is it and at this point they're feeling like you trying to seek some type of attention. Now, Karen is trying to defend Mia, but the girls, Ashley and Robin the most, are feeling like, girl, your credibility is not credible, okay? If that makes sense. But <laughs> they just can't trust anything that she says because we know that Messy Mia has a history of lying. So, yeah, they don't know what to believe. But Karen is like, listen, I wouldn't go to the blogs or to instagram not the blogs to instagram to discuss you know this situation she would say a prayer and call it a day but yeah i mean good way to be there for her but it is kind of like i understand where karen is coming from you know as far as you wanting to give people the benefit of the doubt the doubt but it is kind of like okay what is this it's weird like are you sick or are you not because just like as she said you know the emotional roller coaster i could be there for you but girl what is it? And um, one, let me address these confessionals real quick. Giselle, I don't know. Like, first of all, is Cal still doing your hair? Because if so, you 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 got to separate the, the friendship, the stylist from the friendship. Let him go as a stylist. Because if he did this wig, that wig was so atrocious. That's all I got for that wig. 
Karen, your confessional look, I didn't like the fact that you were clashing with medals. Your your dress had a, a, a like a gold design and then you had green and silver earrings and then that bun it was two-tone kind of like Giselle tends to have two-tone ponytails and stuff like that I didn't like that no ma'am even though I think she looks beautiful in the scene with the whole Bur Burberry look nah. um Giselle's wig was sitting on top of her head and Robin is now the red-headed stepchild that she is on the show um so it's fitting uh Ashley she looked okay from what I remember I think she had like orange on and a high curly pony I didn't care too much for Robin's outfit. I think it was like blue or her confessional look. I think she had a blue outfit on or something like that. It wasn't too bad, but I didn't care for it. We just know that Giselle had the worst look. Overall, it just, it the confessionals ain't doing it for me. Let's just put it that way. Okay, so even more confusion. Ashley and Michael, this whole divorce situation. Now, they're trying to figure out, you just had a baby. So how do y'all go from, you know, that to now divorce? And she was like, well, I don't drink anymore. Okay, I know that's not the reason why y'all divorcing. Okay, well, also, you know, basically, they're drifting apart. And I could understand where she was coming from. But it's just like the way that she was saying it, it was kind of like, girl, what? Just say that y'all have differences. And y'all are no longer compatible. Y'all not having sex like that. It's been four months. You no longer have any interest in drinking. You no longer have interest in doing threesomes. These are things that he still wants to do. You said that after you had your second baby, you wanted monogamy. And you feel like... It's not like he didn't hear no, he just heard not right now. No, he heard that he gonna do whatever he wanna do, regardless of whatever. He been in hotels, he been ass grabbing, he been doing all it is. So he don't care. Rules don't apply to him, obviously, and that's been shown throughout the previous six seasons. So sis, he heard you when you said what you said, he just ain't following what you want. So you're trying to make it seem as if you're wanting to get a divorce, yet... Y'all now shopping for houses. And I was with the girls. That don't sound like a, a divorce. But one thing about it. Redheaded Robin. You keep them lips sealed boo. Because you can't judge nobody. And how their divorce went. Or what it looks like. Because you talking about you and Juan didn't buy a house. Okay but y'all still lived in the same house. For the whole divorce. Girl like you're not even qualified. To even say anything about anybody's divorce. Or that situation. She's starting early y'all. Karen was trying to give her some advice. Like, look, I know divorce can get ugly. So if he throws a bone your way, you make sure you throw that whole skeleton in his ass because it can get very real. Now, in her confessional, Ashley don't seem to think that it could go that way or that it would go that way. But she could see it happening, you know, if things turn ugly. She feels like he could become more vengeful. Okay, then, girl, then you need to take Karen's advice and be on ready. Now, Karen invited the girls over to have a spring party they was taking it back because they're not used to these type of invitations being so laid back so you know she gonna spring forward and they gonna all get together candace and chris they freezing eggs doing embryos i said doing embryos it's, it's making embryos isn't it embryos is like putting the sperm in the egg together and freezing it i think correct me if i'm wrong in the comments don't come for me i'm not a scientist nor a doctor okay so yes um things are going very well for candace okay sis has been on tour she's getting ready to re 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 release <laughs> i just wanted to just say re-release but kind of like uncle cliff but i said re so many times anyway she released in her album re-releasing it um she's on tour with swv faith evans like she's opening for those big names in the r&b industry like that's a big deal and that's really good i actually came across something i don't even know where i was but i did see that she is going to have a show here in atlanta because you know she's kind of like bi-coastal if you will uh that's not bi-coastal girl what she's like from two areas she's like from here and she's from dc so yeah like she has a show down here um i think like this month if i'm not mistaken i think that's what i've seen but yeah the doctor's giving them the rundown basically they need to be in the office at a consistent time every week that's going to be an issue for Chris because he's no longer working from home. He is now in a, a hotel manager, so he can't have, like, two consistent days off. It's always inconsistent every week, so that's going to be a problem for them. So they leave a doctor's appointment, and they get into an argument, basically, because he's trying to tell her, it's hard for me to get consistent days off. I can't control these things. If there's an event with a lot of people, like, I have to be there. He's the manager, so 
he was basically trying to get her to understand that they both have jobs or careers that don't allow them to be off on consi on the consistent basis. So it's like, I mean, y'all need to have therapy before y'all have a child because the way y'all communicate, Candace, you get mad at him for cussing at you or cussing while talking to you. Meanwhile, you're cussing too. So it's just like, okay, okay. y'all still need some damn work, we see. Nothing has really changed. But one thing I did want to mention as well, Candace, get rid of that confessional look. I don't know. She looked like a performer fresh out of the 70s. It was like a that, that drapey... And it was feathers, and I didn't like her eye makeup. I wasn't really a fan of how she had her locks. Like, oh, my gosh, these confessional looks look crazy. The only person that is giving something is Ashley. At this point, we ain't seen Mia. We ain't seen Wendy yet. But Ashley is the only one that's, that's giving us a, a, a decent, good enough confessional look. Robin is the, the red-headed stepchild. She has lunch with Sharice. I don't like Sharice. Never been a fan of her. Just not my cup of tea. She has this snooty attitude. And one could say the same for Karen. But she has this snooty attitude. Like she's better than the ladies. The whole time she was putting on this facade. She was going through a divorce. And... You know, she, I just really didn't, I didn't care for her. I don't like her personality. So I'm not excited to see her back on the show. But, um, you know, Robin had to give us a rundown about how they know each other. Girl, we already know. We heard the story time and time again. Um, they catching up. She recently got a new boo job. She done dated two and a half people since she's been on the market as a single woman. Of course, relationships lead to what's going on with Robin and Juan. What's the point? She's she's never prepared. One, like I said, she's never prepared. Just like Sheree is never prepared when Andy asks her about she about Sheree. Robin has like the same delayed, confused reaction. Production asked her, do, "Do they even want to get married anymore?" Well, I think we should be married, but what was the question again? Y'all ain't set no date or nothing. It's been how long? Like. I, that's why I skip over Robin's storyline last season so much because it's literally the same thing. This is my third time reviewing Potomac, and I feel like I'm going to be doing the same thing that I did last year, skipping right over her storyline because it's just more of the same, more of nothing. Now, Robin, get that prenup. Now, I can, I could agree with you on that, sis. Get that prenup. Yes, you are the breadwinner, which I love to hear. Shout out to you for that. Shout out to Bravo and I guess some Etsy hats and all the other, you know, ways that you make money. Since it's now the breadwinner, get that prenup. Y'all had one before. He better not give you no lip. This is like the only thing that I'll probably be interested in seeing as far as her, you know, storyline goes. Like, girl, get, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm here for that. Mia, okay. I think that was, yeah, I think that's what we were talking about next. Mia, <laughs> she has moved on up and down over to Potomac, okay? So now there's two girls out of the group that stays in Potomac. She's actually right down the street from the Grand Dom. The house looks very nice. She said they decided to rent, which is totally fine. The only thing is, I would not be putting money into the house that I rent. I think she said they put in 65000 if I think. I think that was the number. So they had made some adjustments and things, but I wouldn't be putting in money for a house that I don't own. There's nothing wrong with renting. I know people make that a big deal. It's just like, no, of course you rather buy, you know, ownership is everything. But um, even with uh, her situation right now, maybe renting was best. They made the right decision, okay? So they had family over. Baby, I actually like this scene because it was a real scene. Like it was her family over. It wasn't just like a setup situation. So Karen comes over and then they discuss Karen getting the boob job too. Her and Sharice, they both got, you know, the tits together. Um, she actually got some fat into her breast and she got a breast lift. So Ray ain't too happy about that. He feels like it's a whole vanity thing. But um, Karen is like, baby, I think he's more concerned about who going to enjoy my, my new tits. I said, oh, okay, well, I think that was a part of their storyline too. Her wanting to uh, see other men. Maybe that's a, a, a problem in their relationship. Who knows? Okay, so they have a conversation. 
Now, before they have a conversation, Karen was asking Mia's sister, <laughs> was asking Karen, sis, uh, Mia's sister, what was like a quirky thing that she used to do when she was young. And her sister was like, she used to make this monkey noise. And she ends up making the noise and she dead ass sound like a monkey from the wild. Like, all right, monkey Mia, girl. <laughs> okay, so they have a conversation. And of course, um, Mia is trying to, or Karen is trying to figure out what's going on with Mia and her, you know, health situation. Her mama asked her earlier in the scene, has she heard anything back? And Mia was like, heard anything back from what? And I'm like, that did kind of give me pause because it's like, girl, your situation, your results, like what's going on with this cancer scare situation. So she did explain in her confessional in which she looks good. She has another great confessional look. I like the pink. I like the blunt bob. She looked good. Uh, she explained that there was some lumps discovered in her lungs. Um, so they're basically just keeping an eye out on it. So Karen is like, okay, um, it's, they, I think they said it wasn't Karen Sarah's or something, but um, Karen was talking to her like, you know, as a friend, girl, I was very concerned when you, you know, mentioned the cancer center and all of that. And, you know, she was talking to somebody named Jack Jacqueline. Jacqueline was telling her, um, be honest on your highlight reel, which is Instagram. That's what they look at IG as. And, um, Karen is just like, okay, well, you just want to not do certain things like that on Instagram because you will have the naysayers, especially the girls in our group. Mia don't care. But did y'all catch that Jacqueline, her best friend, it was best friend in quotes. I said, oh, okay, so there must be some problems going on between the two of them because it would just usually be Mia's best friend with no quotations, but it was quotations. So y'all know how production can be very shady with the with the titles and things yeah dr wendy okay we get to see my girl now before we get into her scene production let's have a conversation real quick because i'm noticing that y'all are having like these quick scenes of like i guess it's supposed to be foreshadowing what's gonna happen in the upcoming scene i don't like that because i noticed with Mia's uh, scene before it started, it was like a cherry blossom tree and it was like dying. And then with Robin and Cherie's scene, it was like, you see all these like floor arrangements that look like you at a wedding. But then the music kind of takes a different turn and you realize that it's not happening. You know, it was kind of like setting the tone for these scenes, but I don't like it. Like, I don't like it. It's ugly to me. It's unnecessary. Like, let's stop doing that. Because even after Wendy's scene, we see a cherry blossom leaf and some dude stepped on the plant. Like, I just don't get it. Like, <laughs> let's stop. Like, I get what y'all trying to do, but let's not do that because it's just, it's too much. And uh, yeah. Anyway, we see Wendy down at bar one. Okay, yes, the bar one from who? Peter Thomas of Real Housewives of Atlanta. Peter said he gonna do a crossover. He don't do nothing else, okay? Y'all ain't gonna know him just for the Real Housewives of Atlanta and being Cynthia Bailey's husband, ex-husband. But child, listen, they hear... They talk about how they met through another woman named Wendy and she was having a conversation with the other Wendy about, you know, doing a Nigerian lounge. Peter overheard and he was like, let's do it together. So, yeah, that's the conversation. And uh, Wendy currently has a lot on her plate. She said that she's doing speaking engagements. She's still working on her candle line. She's doing a cooking, a cookbook. And, you know, she's being a mother. So she just has a lot on her plate. And she's adding more to her plate with trying to open, trying to open a restaurant or get into the restaurant business with Peter Thompson. Now we know if Peter don't do nothing else, he gonna grind, he gonna get his restaurants. But we also know that his maintaining of said restaurants is not the best. So I would be leery to do this with Peter. And then you're only getting 20%. You know, I'm not a business with, so don't come for me. But yeah, she's getting a 20%. And he was trying to give her a breakdown. Like, look, you're not going to see attorney investment for two years down the line. So, yes, that's going to be 300K. What's up? When he said that, you know, she was like, whoa, me and my husband, we share bank accounts. She's going to have to get Eddie's approval before they get into all of that. And he was like, well, baby, you better put it down in the bedroom because, huh. But the thing is, you got too much on your plate. And the restaurant industry is so much. I don't think people understand that. Even look at... A lot of big names like here in Atlanta a lot of big names 
open restaurants and they close shortly after because it's hard to maintain. Like you really have to be in it. You have to be in it. Your heart has to be in it in order to really maintain a successful restaurant. So it's like, if you're not ready to be in the field, sis, I'm gonna need you to go ahead and sit this one out, especially because you already got a lot of chaos going on. Like let your candle business grow a little bit more before you start to step into something else. Like, you know, you got to give stuff room to breathe in order to grow, you know, water it a little bit before you step into something else. I understand multiple streams, but the restaurant industry ain't no how. And Wendy, you look good, okay? I will say Wendy has the best confessional look for me out of all of the girls. So top three, Ashley, Wendy, Mia. I'm going I'm to give them those, those girls the top three positions as far as best confessional looks. You look good. I love the hair color. I love the way the hair was laid, how it was curled. I love the orange against the melanin, girl. I say orange, I mean green against the melanin. Like, girl, you did it, okay? I love the entire look. But what I did not love was your wig in that scene. Take that shit off and, and throw it away, okay? I'm Team Uncle Lump. We see Ashley and her kids. They uh, go down to Uncle Lump's house and she's telling them, child, Sheila in that black wig with the, I don't know if them was light bangs or was they baby hairs. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that was, but no me out. So yeah, they're talking about this whole divorce situation. Sis, you buying a house, you getting a divorce. Y'all don't have a prenup. Okay, that's good. You get a divorce that asks you if you have a lawyer, you said no. He's like, okay, well, are y'all buying this house together? Like, what's happening? And she was like, well, no, we're not. We're we're actually getting, he's setting up a proposal, I guess. Uh, I guess for the divorce, this is a, it's a proposal that he's setting up for. But as far as the house goes, it's being bought under the LLC. And Uncle Lump does not like the sound of this because he's like, what? Like, what are y'all doing? What kind of divorce is this? Are y'all getting a divorce or are y'all creating a business? And now she want to get all defensive. I told y'all, I'm I'm just starting this process. And that's why he said you need somebody with expertise on this situation because you don't want Michael to fuck you over with this whole situation. Like, girl, get it together. Get the divorce. Get your money and run because you about to get paid. You don't have no prenup. That just... It, Karen and her invitations like girl I just okay this one was a little bit more subtle but I, I, everybody was kind of like scared to open it because remember she had the butterflies that was dead she had the man that was singing over her head like her invitations are always over the top so people they, they weren't really sure on um, what was gonna come out the box when they opened it but it was so many tacos with tequila did y'all see Dean trying to open that bottle <laughs> Maybe he was twisting that cap. But, um, yeah, so it was cute. I mean, it really didn't give me, like, I wouldn't think spring fling tacos and tequila. I don't know. That just wouldn't be my first mom. But we see Giselle, child, she giving us an update on her house. Not impressed with the entryway. I mean, the inside of the entryway, you know, it it didn't look bad. But, like, it wasn't giving me, wow, this what you've been working on the whole time, you know. Then the West Wing okay she painted it you know it's just two houses combined with Giselle she got a circular driveway it's just not giving me anything I'm not really impressed but you know what this is her project so girl do you we didn't got on that house enough we didn't got on your fashions enough okay the twins that came in face beat y'all I'm not really into the younger girls coming into scenes with they makeup done because why even when Noelle used to do it. Why are you calling me? So we get down to Karen's party, her spring fling or kick off to spring party. It looks very nice, but unfortunately the rain had took over. So they had to close the windows. It was windy as hell. Like, damn, okay. So yes. Uh, the party is starting off. We get introduced to Mia's best friend again, Jacqueline. She knows Karen, obviously, through Mia. And Giselle gets there. And they're having a conversation about, you know, just things of what's going on with Raven. And uh, she's looking for an apartment in New York. So Karen is going to go out there to help her find an apartment. Then they start talking about Giselle 
being an empty nester soon because Grace is in her last year of school and then you know they're only like a year apart her and the twins so then the twins will follow shortly after even in Giselle's confessional she was talking about you know how sad it would be just the thought of her not being without her daughters she got very emotional I was like oh like that that's the type of Giselle that I like to see I think a lot of us like to see her in mommy mode I thought that, that scene or her and her confessional was very sweet I mean, it's not sweet to see her cry, but it's just like, oh, you know, her the love that she has for her daughters. Um, so they was talking about that. Then they started talking about Ashley, like, child, this divorce thing, Giselle thinks she lying. And she was like, because the first thing that you would do is get an attorney. She hasn't got an attorney and she's trying to figure out what the hell is going on. Karen thinks that Ashley is playing the game because she's using this as a way to get the things that she wants. She wants the house with the picket fence and... uh. Goat member, he wants to stay in Concrete City. He wants to be in a condo and there's no space for the kids. And I always thought that like once they start having kids and stuff, it just looked very crowded in that in that apartment or the condo that they live in. So Karen feels like she's using this as a way to get what she wants. And you know what? Karen might be on to something. She could be doing this as a way to get what she wants, or she can also be very aware that that prenup has expired. And she might take the money and run. So I don't know which way she going to go. But it is a lot of chaos and confusion around it. Giselle got her ass together. Because uh, Ashley came into the party. And they got straight to it. Okay, we was just talking about this. Girl, what's happening? Because you saying that y'all getting a divorce. You said that you just found a house. And you actually did buy it in the LLC with Michael. That's not a divorce. And she was like... And Giselle was like, why would I buy a house with somebody I'm divorcing? I wouldn't do that with Jamal. She said, hell, Robin ain't even doing that with Juan. That house is in her name. Like, oh, <laughs> now she just spilled Robin's tea. <laughs> but she's just saying to prove a point, like, you're not buying a house with somebody that you're divorcing. And then she tried to make it seem as, as she tried to make it seem as if she never said the word divorce. You clearly said that you were getting in a divorce. And you said that in the state of Virginia or Arlington, you have to have a year of separation before you can get divorced. So yes, you admitted to both of those that you were getting in separation to end in divorce. Like, girl, why are you playing these games? At this point, I'm over the storyline. I'm damn ready. Child, Giselle told her straight up, I think you lying to me. She claimed she being transparent. She woke up one day and had a coochie craving for him. Gross. Ugh. Like, we don't want to hear nothing about no coochie cravings with Michael. She said she didn't have sex with him. Whatever. Karen is like, look, I understand all that you're doing. You feel like you might not get the house that you want for you and your kids with your money alone. But his name did not need to be on the deed. Okay, whatever. So Candace comes in. Um... They have a conversation because Ashley walks away. They talk about the whole divorce situation with Ashley. Uh, Candace feels like this is a good thing for Ashley. She wants to throw the divorce party. Girl, listen, take a page from Kenya and Phaedra and don't do that, okay? You stay out of it. Y'all already had issues. You stay out of it. Y'all understand you're elated for this potential divorce. But don't celebrate too soon because the key word I just used was potential. Nobody really knows that they're going to get a divorce. We'll believe it when they finally sign them papers and it's over and done with. Now we got to see our girl, Ascala. Hey, girl. I swore, but now she just was not going to be a part of the cast. I mean, I know this is only episode one, so you just never know. But uh, it was definitely good to see her on screen. Hopefully, we'll see her in a friend of capacity like we did last year. Oh. Child, now Wendy arrived and she went over to Giselle and tried to give her a hug. Giselle said, skirt. No, ma'am, do not touch me. I'm doing fine. I'm doing good. Like, we not doing no hugging. Now, in her confessional, she said that Wendy spent the whole year trashing her family. Like, girl, I ain't got nothing to say to you. Now that you see me, you want to greet me with a hug. Like, I think not. But you also need to think back to the beginning, Miss Giselle. She got on your level and you couldn't handle it because she got you together because you sat there the whole season questioning who she is as a person because she decided to get a little improvement, you know, on her body. And you start questioning who she is as a person, saying that she was overcompensating for her husband, who was supposedly or allegedly rumored to be cheating or entertaining Instagram models, all it is. So, yeah, you got mad because she gave it back to you, only she gave it back to you in a better way. So, you can get mad all you want, but she just got you together and you was not prepared. 
Nia arrived and Giselle got straight to it. Like, hey girl, um, yeah, let's talk about this social media post. Like, is this what cancer no cancer looks like? <laughs> like, damn, Giselle, she ain't playing no games. Talk about her outfit and just how she looks. And um, it was like, it looks like I've arrived. So yeah, that's what Giselle was like, baby, this social media post, like, what is it? Because I noticed that you edited your caption. Like, what is going on? Like, she really feels like Mia is lying. Like, she's not making sense. And Mia was like, well, it was actually, I got a call. I was using my social media platform because I was hurting. That's the reason why. And uh, now Giselle tried to make it seem like Karen was siding with her, talking about it was weird and all of that. Karen never said that. She was definitely the one that was on the side of me and trying to give her the benefit of the doubt. But y'all know how Giselle get down. So, yeah, it's just like, okay you was hurt and you said that you got a call from a doctor who actually said that you got cancer you have lymphoma and i'm not feeling like you being truthful because even when your mom was asking you about it you didn't even know what results that she was talking about and then you you confusing the people on whether or not you have cancer whether you not whether you do or don't so why wouldn't you just say that you got diagnosed with lymphoma if that was the case like, it just didn't make sense. Now, I was saying, and she's getting defensive, and she's saying all these fuck yous to Giselle for questioning her health. Girl, you're lying. Something ain't right about what you're saying. Okay, and let me clear this up. I do think that Mia is lying about something. Yes, she had some type of health issues, some type of health scare, but there were three things, and I mentioned this in the panel. I just want to clarify it here. There were three things that gave me pause the first one was when like i said earlier in the review that she acted as if she didn't know what her mom was talking about when she asked her about her results like girl your health issues you were getting tested like duh that's what i'm asking about and then two in her confessional she was saying that there was lumps found in her lungs or whatever they were still running tests trying to figure things out so you know they just trying to rule things out but then when giselle confronted you at the event you made it seem as if when you got the call and when you made the Instagram post, you were then told that you had lymphoma. So it just did not make sense to me. It's like, okay, so why are you acting as if you had cancer? You don't have cancer. Like people are confused as to what you're talking about. And there's three different occasions where it's still unclear. Like you're not saying, oh yeah, you know, I got lymphoma when your mom was asking or when you posted it, you didn't make it clear that you got lymphoma. Like girl, something in the milk is not clean there. Ashley lying. Who else lying? Giselle, she be lying. Child. Anyway, it left us on a cliffhanger to be continued. So we'll see what happens next week. I think that this was a good, you know, opening. It wasn't too much going on, but it was just enough to set the tone for the rest of the season. So let's get down in the comments and talk, y'all. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. And I will see y'all in the next one. Bye.